fix this though. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's fucking amateur hour every single time, I swear. You're doing great, right? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I'll pay you the big bucks. Yep. There we go. Now we can see it. Can you guys hear us okay? Funny says he can hear us. He can hear us. Sick. Okay. Well, welcome to the fourth episode of the podcast. Right? Fourth? Three and a half, four? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Today we got our guest, Rennick. OG Alex player from California, now in Arizona, correct? Where in Arizona are you from? Phoenix. Phoenix? Nice, nice. Right, right in the center, yep. Yep. So we're going to kind of dive into some, uh, let's, let's go ahead and just get kicked off with uh, your history with Third Strike. How did how did you find this game, and, and when did you start playing? Yeah. Uh, hi, Lance. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, nobody cares about Lance. Fuck Lance. Nobody, oh, okay. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, as far as how my my uh, Third Strike career, I guess, started off is the long... Uh, really, dude, like, um, I lived in a shitty old apartment, and across the street from the apartment, there was a bowling alley, and it had Third Strike. And one of my buddies was like, knew another guy that played Third Strike, and he's like, we should play this game. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I've picked Chun Li. Um, what year is this? Like, this is two thousand three. Two thousand three. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If I'm remembering correctly, yeah. Um, pick Chun Li, and like we were all mashing, but I was beating my friend, so I, I like dropped her the first week because I it didn't feel right, man. Like yeah. it was like I want to, <laughs> you know, I like having a good time. <laughs> You know, I like improving. I don't like it easy. Don't give it to me easy, right? Yep. Uh, so, and then, fortunate enough, I was in SoCal. We had uh, our third strike everywhere, to be honest. There was third strike at Moore Park College down the way. There was uh, an arcade right in my own town at the, mo- at the time, Simi Valley, called Interface. That was also owned by the same owner as FFA. And then FFA was only 15 minutes away. So I, I was very fortunate to be have options to play Third Strike. Um, and then, like, what really did it for me uh, was... I... Uh, I didn't have a character. Um, my buddy played Alex. And I'm like, well, my friend plays Alex. I don't want to play Alex. Like, you know... Um, and we were all really shitty at the time. Yeah. Um, and then he dropped Alex, so I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'll try Alex. Uh, and then uh, I just never stopped once I... And the reason behind that was it just felt good to hit people with big normals. But what really popped it off with for me as far as, like, you know, I had gone to uh, Family Fun once or twice. I had gone to Interface. Um, and then... One dude shows up, older Mexican dude, I was still in high school, and he is just parrying the shit out of every single thing anybody does. And it's looking so sick, and he's punishing super hard, and then, like, after he gets his parry, it's, like, into dungeon and over, and it was just, like, like, I was like, oh, dude, you can be really sick in this game. This is really cool. Like, you can be a monster. Um, and then... For whatever reason, I was playing Chun Li, messing around, and I tried to chip him out. Uh, and he parries. As he gets the first parry, he looks at me, and keeps parrying the the whole thing, <laughs> and then finishes the whole Chun Li super punish kill. And then that kind of like sealed it for me. I'm like, all right, this is like this. This is so sick. You can be like, you can be nasty. You can have like in game talk. You know, shit talk like. Yeah. You know, you can speak through the game. Like, it was it was really cool. That was Frankie 3S. So, like, no no wonder he was just beasting everyone back then, you know. Um, and then kind of Third Strike uh, tournament started at Family Fun. Uh, my first tournament, uh, this old school player named Geo, um, which was the guy that was winning all the tournaments back then, a Yang player, Yang and Chun. Only person up in the like winning back then uh, against Geo was a guy was Victor Lee, and um, Geo first my first match in a tournament my first 
first tournament, first match, he picks Alex against me and just destroys me. He doesn't play Alex. He just, yeah, you know, had to had to, had to uh, destroy something beautiful. I don't know, but <laughs> so assert dominance, uh, dude, assert dominance. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then uh, you know, I just kept grinding away because I loved it. I had nothing really else in my life. I was abjectly poor. I um, mean, it was kind of like my escape. Uh, you know, I would like, I remember one time I was so broke, I had like $10 in my bank account and Amir, you guys know Amir, he was yeah. like, you gotta come out, you gotta come out tonight, like, we're all playing, like, come on, dude. And I'm like, dude, I have like $10. Uh, and, uh, he, I, I can't even pull out a 20 out of the ATM, like, yeah. it's not, and he's like, no, dude, you don't get it. Go to the gas station, buy a stick of gum, and then get $5 cash back. <laughs> so that's what i did so like uh yeah so but um but yeah it was really just kind of like you know my escape for like that time in my life and it was fun to like be able to work on something and like see improvement right mm -hmm. um third strike is a pretty pretty sweet game that if you do put work into it you are going to see improvement um and and it has a lot of I guess you would say motivators because when you do do something good or it looks sick and it feels sick so it's kind of you know builds on itself like that. Um, and then yeah the you know the rambat started popping off and all that so I just kept playing really and I was just lucky enough to be, uh, you know near it really yeah. So. Uh... So this is something that I have a hard time wrapping my head around a little bit because I didn't start until 2011. And I know I've talked to some people who were around back then and they talk, you know, I'm kind of curious, like, what is the, uh, what was the experience like back then? For instance, these days, if I had new players starting, I'm going to be like, okay, go find footage of your character on Japanese third strike, you know, watch all the footage, kind of figure out what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, there's mm -hmm. probably some kind of tutorials around, uh, but you guys had not much of that. I don't think back then. Yeah, that, no, no, there was nothing. The only thing that you could get lucky with was, I think it was ComboVideos.com. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And you had to get yeah. to ComboVideos.com before they ran out of bandwidth to download the video. <laughs> yep. So it was always like a mad dash. Like someone would be like, hey, there's a new one. And go to the site and try to like get it before, like, you know, said add a bandwidth back in the, the days when, like, you know, people were only paying a certain amount for their sites and would run out, so... Uh, yeah, no, it was, as far as research goes, there wasn't a whole lot. Like, it would be literally forums on SRK where some jalopy on the other side of the world or, uh, uh, the U.S. Was, would be giving their tips, and you have no idea if they're, like, any worth a damn or not, or, you know, whatever, you know. Um, there's always, like, there was always the bait of, like, which super should Alex pick? And it's like, <laughs> oh, dude, I, you know they would it would have like a third of the people would be stun gun fans a third of the play, <laughs> players would be like hyper bomb fans um and yeah so like you know it's like that disinformation or just not even disinformation just bad information back then was kind of what you had to sift through so it was a lot of like self experimentation and then if you were lucky enough to have someone actually decent around um they 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 would you know point you in the right direction um luckily i had a lot of good players around me um so no one really talked to me and so i started beating them which is a whole different uh <laughs> you know a whole different um i guess feeling from back then but but yeah no there was no like i'm gonna look up uh some combo videos and just have my share of whatever i want to look at or look up yeah did you have okay, like? Okay, so you uh, just kind of touched on. Oh, go ahead, Ray. Uh, did you have like a mentor or anything then? Did like, anybody like? When did someone eventually like pull you to the side, or not pull you to the side? But you know what I mean, like kind of say like, oh, like I can tell you're getting better. Like maybe you should do this. Like, was anybody like really sharing information like that back then, or was it kind of just like, you know, <laughs> come and get fucking wrecked and hope you win some games? Yeah, no, it was come and get fucking wrecked. Mm -hmm. And if if you're if you're so okay, family fun is a. Uh is an interesting thing like you know you could get beat up i was a young little white guy in the valley like it wasn't it wasn't like the nicest of places 
but once you got your own little crew or community it was it was like you know family or whatever right mm. but there was that like barrier of entry you know i didn't really have a mentor per se as much as like i formed some good like friendships i guess you could say and they like you know because i pretty much like figured out the tech quote unquote or the way to play myself but what's valuable to me as a player is to someone to push me to like because once i start winning in a lot and and like and like it's not a challenge or you know it gets boring like i'm out like my motivation just immediately takes a nosedive so you know, like someone like Yi, five star. Like I remember the first time that he gave me any ounce. He even the first time he even looked at me, <laughs> even though we've played, you know, times before. Is like, you know, this is back in the day, so it's nothing too amazing. But um, like he, I was Alex. He was Ken. He jumped over. Uh, I cross uh, the medium kick block. Uh, block. I blocked the cross up with his medium kick, and then he did an immediate like strong fierce, and I red paired the strong fierce you know con yeah. confirmed in a super and he and he all he did was get out the cab and as he's walking out he goes and then just leaves right <laughs> <laughs> i was like all right i'm making progress right so uh but yeah and then like once people start to recognize that like you know uh like you're putting in the work it felt like you know people were like i said kind of talk to you through the game like almost like be a dick about it but like hey you got hit by short short i'm gonna short short you every freaking time until yeah. you get this shit in your head that you got to do something different right um so yeah uh i guess you know what's oddly enough like i think ken i was probably the closest thing to like a teacher to me mm -hmm. um which is really bizarre because he's not <laughs> not he has a weird way about going about everything. So yeah. maybe that's why I kind of play odd. I don't know. But yeah, so yeah, he's the he's the first one to like actually drop like knowledge. Whether I could do anything with the crazy weird knowledge he had was a different story. But he was the first one to kind of like really give me like real mechanics and stuff like that. I remember listening to uh, what was it? I think this was the Dr. Sub-Zero podcast with Sextaro as the guest. Mm -hmm. I remember him explaining there, and, and and he asked like, oh, like how can you beat like these other top players? Like, what are you thinking? He's like, oh, well, like you know, like you will be like four moves ahead, but like so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just be five moves ahead. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, it doesn't. I remember one time he came over, and he and I don't know, I think he wanted to show me Tekken, and uh, <clears throat> we played Tekken, and like he's just beating my ass. I'm like, bro, I've never tech tech touched Tekken in my life. Like yeah. it's this is a hard game. Like, what is this? You don't hold back to block uh, only when you want to block low or something. Anyway, that that finishes, and then like he opens, like I like we like finish up. He goes to his car. He opens his trunk, and there's nothing but Wiener Snitchel packages <laughs> and game uh, uh, game guides like in Japanese of like Guilty Gear, Tekken, like just. Like, that was the kind of guy he was. Like, just, <laughs> yeah, amazing. Amazing, yeah. Um, so, I know, like, back then, so you, you talked a little bit about coming up in SoCal. Obviously, back then, SoCal was considered, like, the heart of American Third Strike, right? And there's so mm -hmm. much going on there. There's, like, you know, there's Pyro Lee. There's Mongolians at the Gates, you know? There's uh, the Dr. Sub-Zero podcast and the FFA <laughs> Ranbats. Now, I got to imagine, if you're part of that while it's happening, you probably know, like, I'm part of something pretty special here. Yeah, no, be, well, I mean, you know, it's always like, while stuff is happening, you, you, it doesn't really kick in, especially when you're young, but, you know, I did, I did get a feeling of that, because I, the whole Mongolian at the gates kind of thing was simply because they did not have access to all, a bunch of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they were in Mongolia, because it was like, <laughs> you know, they didn't have Third Strike arcades every 15 minutes or whatever like that, so... Um, yeah, I did realize that, yeah, pretty honestly that it was pretty special. And then that's kind of why, like, when someone showed up and they had the juice, it was, like, really cool to see. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, 
people huddling, huddling on the other side of the game. I'm like, oh shit, like, oh, damn. <laughs> like, you know, so it was, it was, it was cool to see. Yeah. Super cool to be a part of too. Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. I remember the, um, Pyro versus, there's a Pyro versus Justin video, I mm -hmm. think, uh, back then in SoCal. And yeah, like the crowd's going wild. Like it's nuts. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, like, and that's the thing is like, I'm sure we'll talk about fight Kate and online and all that later, but like, I don't, because the level of, energy and intensity for me growing up was like so intense and in the arcade and that that like feel you get when you're playing with other people side by side head to head etc like that um it was it's like a different experience and that's why i think like it did well in southern california is because like those experiences that were just like it's not euphoria, but you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like yeah. when you're apart and you're there and you get to see these like things that go down in history, um, it's it's pretty motivating and it, it it's just something to be like that's cool to be a part of, yeah. Yeah, I remember watching the uh I think it was the SBO quals one year when I was like in high school and it was like the three V three, like and it had the crowd noise in the background, which was like fucking insane at the time. I remember I was probably what yeah. sixteen, seventeen, I was just like holy shit, this is insane, like, everyone is so excited about this fucking game, like, I, wa this, I want to play this game, I want to get good at this, so, yeah, those videos are legendary. Yeah, no, and, and being in SoCal, I was fortunate enough to see, I mean, that's, that's what was, you know, little, little, little spoiled, I got to see a bunch of legendary, you know, Marvel vs. 2 Capcom matches, like, mm. you know, it was all it was popping all over the place, so lucky. Yeah. What was FFA yeah, like? Uh, were you guys like, yeah, playing? Yeah, I was fast that too. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, were you guys playing on like American cabs? Was it Japanese cabs? Like, what, what was it like? Well, yeah. So that's <laughs> so back in the day at FFA, it was uh, you know the big blues American cabs. They did their best to take care of the sticks and make them semi, uh, you know, reliable. Um, <clears throat> And I would say, like, things didn't really... I don't think we really got crispy until Dungeon Arcade opened up. And that was all Japanese cabs, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And then um, I think more players started to hone their craft. And we kind of just... After a day of playing on the Japanese cabs, we were just like... Like, the first first five to ten minutes was like i can't do shit and then at the end of the day we're like no wonder we get our ass beat this is way superior like you know so yeah so yeah i can't imagine practicing on american cabs and then going to japan to try to play like, i don't know how the fuck they did that uh, i don't know either but apparently frankie did amazing when he went way way back in the day going from american cabs to uh joysticks so um i'm Pretty sure, dude, he was the impetus for Japan to get on to the gen the dungeon train, mm -hmm. to be honest. Because he went and did work. Like, you know, I think one of the few Americans that actually showed them something, right? So, yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, I'm, I want to ask a little more about that. Because, uh, so I know, to some extent, it, you know, there's probably still some truth to it. But back then, especially, I feel like, you know, the narrative was like, oh, Japan is so far above everyone else, right? That, mm -hmm. you know, you yeah. you go to Japan, like Pyro, like I remember Pyro talking about like on podcast or whatever, he would go to Japan and like download as much as he could, just information from being there and then take it all back to FFA. And, you know, that's why FFA was a colony of Japan, mm -hmm. you know, and so on. Uh, yeah. What was, you know, I, and we talked a little bit about the SBO quals and you guys uh, competing in those. So I imagine at the time, like Japan was like it, right? Like I really want to go to Japan someday and perform. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you know, and it's and it's cool because when Pyro did go, he did well too. Like, you know, it's not like he like won all the tournaments or any or like, but but they definitely he definitely at least showed that like at least a few people in America got some juice and um, and you know when he would come back, I don't, I wouldn't say he taught anybody much. At least like because I was cool with Pyro, like we hung out and played and shit, but. He didn't really teach me much other than like, oh, uh, KO would do this. It's fucking sick. And like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
didn't really you know no no philosophy or the reasoning behind it but he would in his own game implement a lot of like uh japan tech and then you know if if you like paid attention you could like oh that is different he didn't used to do that and that's way better than what he was doing before so you can kind of gleam what you know what he learned and you know hopefully uh take that information and do what you can with it yeah um, okay, so back then, obviously, and, and still now, so you, so you back then, you, you, you know, you started with Chun Li, which is too easy, right? You want a little more of a challenge, so you switched to Alex. Now I've got to imagine, even back then, your brain is very aware, of, like, okay, Alex is not very good, <laughs> you're right. I had no idea. No, okay, uh -huh. okay, tell us more about I had, that. I had no idea. I just, I just hit a few jump ins, and I hit somebody with like the overhead furious, mm -hmm. and I was just like this. This is sick. It feels so good to hit people. Like, I'm a very, like, you know, I guess, I, like, you know, I do know, like, you know, the, the nuts and bolts behind all the stuff and all that, but I'm a real big, you know, momentum feeling player. Um, that's what's funnest for me. Um, you know, when I try to, like, get, like, buckle down and, like, all right, Ty, you actually got to, like, practice to get better instead of just fucking around and doing cool shit um like you know i can do it but that's what's best as far as how i get enjoyment there so i think uh you know i just realized like it he fit me in the sense of like he's very momentum like i can be getting my ass kicked for the most of the round and if I like, oh, I caught you. I know, I I know where you at now. I know, I I get your game plan now. I can just like, you know, end the round hopefully pretty quickly. Um, and I just love the mind game type of stuff, like, you know, ma maximizing off of s simple things. Um, just because I know that this is it's gonna work rather, you know, just because you know, I'm living in your head or whatever. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so is that? How do you get better at Alex, right? So you got like, you know, you got your best players in FFA at the time were like what, like uh, Pyro, Yi, Amir, Sextaro, mm -hmm. uh, all top tier characters. Uh, characters with a lot of tools and options. Alex yeah. is very straightforward, right? So what do you do with Alex to like, okay, I got to beat those guys. How am I going to do it? Well, I mean, like, so Third Strike's a pretty sick game because <laughs> there is. Uh, parry uh so i'll just touch on that real quick that alone i was like damn i really can't press a button here there's they're just gonna beat me every time but because i know they're gonna do that every time and abuse this situation i do have a card that i can pull and i can hurt them very badly for it mm -hmm. so I I think that is what I caught on to in the beginning. Um, that kind of helped me start to develop. Okay, so in this situation, like, and then it's like, you know, it goes from there. It's like, okay, I can't parry here. Um, so I got to block more and I got to be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, or can't block more it's going to turn into real bad news real quick because Ginny Jin's going is like almost built and I don't have it you know so uh Alex is fortunate enough to have a really good super that if I super and you're going into that it's going to beat you it's you know it's just going to beat you so there was things like that and also like just the basics dude like back you know there's a lot of stuff even to this day that like the basics are going to get you really far punishing sweeps every time is like dude you're gonna win rounds off of that just alone if you punish a sweep every time like and alex can punish a sweep pretty good with the nex shoulder right mm -hmm. so i remember me first being like okay if they're gonna sweep and i block it i have to punish with it and like that was kind of what like i focused on for like a few days and took like a few days because i was like new to fighting games i like you know it took me a while to like build habits like that alone like put me above my friends mm -hmm. and then i'm like okay now i can focus on the bigger fish and like you know so um yeah i think for me it was like 
just catching on to little things and being like, okay, when this happens, you got this or this. Don't waste any other brain energy or, or anything on anything else. This or this. And if you can't, and if that's not in the cards, you you play defensively to wait for your time. And then when your opening comes, hit them very hard. <laughs> you know, so that was kind of like just what worked for me. And then just slowly polishing, you know, execution and stuff like that. You know, realizing that I can hit people off of Alex standing short into super. Just weird little maximizations, efficiencies there. And, um, yeah, I mean, shit, like, I went, you know, the day that I went from when people, when I blocked an uppercut, I did EX knee or knee to EX slash. And then I transitioned to, you know, I blocked the uppercut, then do furious slash powerbomb. Like, what a, a huge difference, right? Like, yeah. I'm not spending any meter. I get so much more damage. And if and if I position myself, right, and I can even dash before if I wanted to get, mm. like, a corner if, if I didn't have it, and I can throw people in the corner. Like, just little adjustments like that of just changing your punish, like, helped a lot. Were you yeah, using, that, like, that, uh, training mode at all back then? Like, in the earlier days? Oh, no. Like you, were you just learning on the arcade on the fly, or where you had a Dreamcast yeah, home or anything? All arcade. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. I, th I think that's the biggest difference between now and then, right? Like, there's so much information out there for these kids, and they can just hop into training mode and simulate 20 different situations and pick it up right then. And then, well, yeah, dude. I mean, like, and and that's what was kind of like fun for me is like real time. I had to force myself to like think about things and like see if I could adapt by the third round, second round, whatever. And then on top of that, like being such a broke guy back yeah. in the day. You're money I, matching. You're money matching. Every time you play. For me, like, that was a quarter of a time at a time, dude. I yeah. brought $5. Like if, <laughs> if, if he was there, I was going to blow through my $5. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, okay. Um, so shifting a little bit. So, you know, you're in the heart of FFA, you're in the SoCal Third Strike, um, and then kind of Street Fighter Four hits. I imagine that was a really big shift in, in what everyone was doing at the time. Yeah. Um, Third Strike dies down a little bit, but then uh, Sun Route Calip happens a little later. Um, but what I remember from that era the most, um, so I started in like 2011, so right when OE comes out, and I remember at that time, like how I started interacting with this game was like, I watched your, some of your, the content you were putting out, some of the content Seroid was putting out, he was putting out some, uh, some some guides um i watched like i watched all the beast arena videos like multiple times mm -hmm. uh i watched like fucking gutex talking to Yi about the game mm -hmm, um yeah. yeah a lot of that stuff so yeah talk to me a little bit about what you were doing with content creation at the time because i mean for i can attest like personally like yeah that helped me get into the game yeah no i mean back then any of my like personal contact cr contact creation was uh I, I dude i mean it just goes back to me just being so uh, just so broke like that like the only thing i could do was literally fuck around on my computer like make silly videos and stuff like that and what my and my, my passion at that time was third strike <laughs> um and you know and then like you know kind of had a rough riff rough crew riff raff crew riff raff crew of friends <laughs> that also played third strike um and i lived in a big huge party house like mm -hmm. like we all rented a room guy was renting uh the closet guy was renting the garage <laughs> like lived in a big party house and i would in my room was like the third strike like gaming room um so it would be like you know parties and then <laughs> go to the ties like shitty cave room for like third strike on the floor um and then like you know i scrounged up enough money to get i think it was like called a hodgepodge record hodge hodgepodge recorder or something like that where you could like record off the xbox um on your on a crt and um i just started making content um you know it it was just really fun and i took to video editing like for whatever reason pretty quickly 
still really shitty video editing, but, um, and I, I was just a weird dude that was making weird videos. And then hopefully there was a little third strike information or gleam to gleam from of it or whatever. I would just have cr weird ideas and run with it. Some people liked them. Some people didn't. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was good. I mean, I ended up, that ended up, you know, and like bridging into other stuff. Like I did like a lot of the edit video editing for cross counter or running sets and all that stuff. And eventually I didn't work and Gutex actually bought me a computer cause I was working doing video editing for him. And that just made me do, be able to do more video editing and stuff like that. So yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. The beast arena that man, I forgot about that. That's a fond memory in my heart for sure. I mean, Big Game James was playing with me back in the day. And, like, it's funny because, like, you know, I was just, like, smacking him around back then. And now he's, like, he's honestly the, one of the best players, like, I've ever played. Sure, yeah. Like, he lived with me for a while recently. Mm -hmm. And, like, you talk about, like, you know, because I've played, like, Neiman and, and you know, all all these freaking strong ass players <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, in, yeah. like but dude there's he big game james like dude he made me think reevaluate my life choices like dude okay. <laughs> like how can you be this focused and this like he cuz he's no funny business right like i'm like huh, i'm going to do this cool little cheeky cool <laughs> thing and i'm going to set up you to do this so i can red parry and do something sick and he's like nope business only every time <laughs> like so uh anyway beast arena yeah yeah no i read so i don't know like something about those videos resonated with me to the point where you know i watched them maybe two or three times back then mm -hmm. and i still remember parts of it you know it's you know and it's like yeah. i don't know why it's just taking up real estate in my head right like <laughs> i remember this moment where you're like i might be the best necro in america <laughs> and, and, and james is like yeah you might be dude <laughs> <laughs> or kind of like fucking like you have like uh it's like Eric Chen and Fry and you're yeah. like asking them about their match. He's like, well, Eric Chen's like, well, the biggest problem with Fry is he just plays like such a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, it was fun times, dude. Like we had the little, we had the little uh like little bits of third strike info in there, but it was mostly just like just fucking off. <laughs> Much, I mean, that's yeah. like one of the coolest things about third striking yeah. you know like you just get your friends together i mean we do this at ray's house all the time you know everyone's drinking uh just kind of like talking shit to each other the whole time mm -hmm. i bet i can beat you with uh necro at, you know whatever like <laughs> right. that's some of the most fun you can have in this game yeah no i i, I it's something about third strike that like because i've played a lot of games um mm -hmm. you know i've tested my my uh tested my feet put my water on <laughs> whatever the thing is about a lot of other games and some i really like and some i actually did well for the amount of work i put into them but something about third strike man it's got it's got what i want <laughs> I, I always call it like the uh the and one of like fighting games you know because like not only do you win like you just embarrass someone and you make them feel so stupid for ever thinking they could do that to you and it's just, you know, like, you watch other games, like, ST and stuff, you know, like, you lose, it's like, okay, he jumped, he got uppercutted, he got fireball trapped, like, into the round, you know. Third strike, it's like, oh, you press a button, I low parry, you fucking idiot, why did you ever think you could do that? And then you just lose that way, and it's it, it's embarrassing, you know, so. Yeah, talking through the game, dude, like, I love it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you had some, uh, what, do you, what do you call them, like, uh, some... Oh, he has some big videos, like some certified hood classic videos in that time period. <laughs> yeah. So you got like you've got, of course, the G the famous GGPO video. Mm -hmm. You know, mind games, more like lag mind games. Well, okay, so look, I know we're gonna talk about fight K and yeah. stuff later, but yeah. dude, you gotta realize like, and I kind of talked about it in the video, like I had Dungeon right across the street. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I go there? Oh, I'll just jump on GGPO for a little bit. And yes, that was a mistake. Like, yeah. and because, you know, like what I talked about, how I grew up like in the arcade with that feeling and like, you know, I'm kind of this like feeling momentum player, like, you know, going online and trying third strike was a jarring experience. Mm -hmm. Like, 
wh whoever was the big dog on Fight Kate at the time was a, like one of them was a Yang player, and he was just like teleporting across the screen and i'm just like what the fuck is this i can't tech throws like urian's dash is a goddamn teleport like yeah so that i mean dude it, uh, like a lot of those videos were just you know that one particularly was just out of frustration i was like i gotta do something to like blow off steam or something so yeah it's <laughs> a great one yeah i mean I, I feel like okay so and we kind of talked about this on a couple other previous episodes but i feel like Online third strike has evolved to some extent uh, in the last decade. Because mm -hmm. I remember playing online back then, and the way people played is not how they play now, and it was not. It did not resemble arcade third strike. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it right here. Third fight Kate online just still doesn't resemble <laughs> third arcade third strike. <laughs> but yeah. I'm 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 obviously a little biased. Sure. Um, but maybe we'll maybe we'll bring up some examples about that later. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, okay. So, kind of piggybacking off of this uh, content creation. Um. So after that, and you know, at this point, I'm I'm a new new Third Strike player. I'm just watch, absorbing everything, um, watching across uh, you know cross counter and all this stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I bought like their Christmas special one year. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so, so you end up playing on Cross Assault. You and, uh, and Dr. Sub-Zero are on Cross Assault. Um, yeah. Yeah, how was that? So... Oof. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I, dude... Oh, man. It was... Uh... It was an experience. Okay. I So... It like don't get me wrong, very fortunate and like a cool part of time of my life, and I got a lot of good opportunities and experience because of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but damn, was it odd? Okay, you know, I, well, Capcom, it was their first stream reality show kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it was to promote uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And because I'm not a, a, because I wasn't a training mode player, mm -hmm. it was especially difficult for me because it was just when I would play against someone, I would, that's when I would like, you know, start making notes, you know, experiment, stuff like that. Um, I did actually, I did catch on pretty well, uh, luckily. Um, but it was weird, dude. Like, you know, Capcom had us in a hotel. And then every day they would take us from the hotel to Capcom headquarters. And then in... And then, like, our breakfast that was supposed to be provided every day was, like, a banana and a bagel. Like, you know, like, when I, I, the first day I was like, oh, okay. Like, I mean, that's good. As an adult now, I'd be like, sweet. Yeah. But, like, back then I was like, where's the bacon and eggs? Where's the watermelon? Where's the OJ? You know, yeah. like, so there was, like, silly stuff like that. There was... Uh, I mean, it was just nuts, dude. Like, John D was just full tilt trolling the whole time. Like, you know, <laughs> just, it, you know, you had, like, uh, Bronson. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, Evo Champ, you know, is like, like, what, what, you know, like, how am I stacking up against these guys? But it was Street Fighter more than it was Tekken, right? So yeah. it was... So it was kind of balanced. Um, I did well. It was weird being in like the little fake rooms. Like it was one big room and the Street Fighter and the Tekken room was like just like some shitty like cardboard that split us <laughs> between, you know. And then like, you know, Alex, like me and Alex, like we'd known each other for a long time. Alex Valle. I even saw him uh, recently last week. Um, it was cool to like have an OG, like, kind of, like, break stuff down for you and stuff like that. Uh, you know, met Nerd Josh, and he's a really cool guy. I think it was Sherry, Sherry Honor T, and Hornet. Mm -hmm. um, which everyone was, everyone's really cool. Sherry's always, obviously cool. And then the other team, uh, I don't even want to get into <laughs> what all happened on that side like yeah, so sure, yeah that's fine yeah like we can leave that that one there but uh yeah sh shout outs to eris uh <laughs> but 
That'd be sick. But um, yeah, dude. And then like the end of it kind of like boiled down to like me and Nerd Josh and for the final whatchamacallit. And then like it was just we went to final round for like the finale or whatever. Like Nerd Josh just walks in and then like I'm walking into the venue and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Show us, show us, show us you purchased your, your venue stuff and all that. I'm like, dude, I'm in the fucking <laughs> event. Like, <laughs> like, the miles, dude. I don't have a badge and all that. Like they literally, Capcom literally flew me out here for this. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, it was just, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird experience. Uh, oh, this, I'm just like, this is the, this is the kicker for me here. Okay. God, you guys just opened up a fucking box of worms. <laughs> <laughs> So every day after like the streaming, you would get to go back to your hotel, and I, you know, depressed, super depressed, poor kid back in the day. Like I literally just walked, and if no one grabbed me for like, hey, we're all chill over here, like I literally just made my way to my room. But they gave Josh a console with Street Fighter Cross Tekken on it. Ah. Oh. So he got to go back to his hotel room and practice. practice. Yeah. And oh, I did it. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to go over to Josh's, even though, like, he's cool and we're homies. I'm not going to yeah. go over to Josh's and fucking play him mm-hmm. and, let like, let him download me because he's going to be better at that anyway, like, labbing and all. Like, so I was, like, not making, like, I wasn't making good strategic decisions or anything because I should have just went over and played anyway, even though it was going to be Download City. But... Like, dude, how are you going to send the two competitors, like, yeah. all right, you guys made it. Josh, you get the console with this <laughs> game on it. Ty, you go chill in your bedroom. Like, go fuck off. We'll see you know. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was screwed from the very beginning, yeah. dude. Like, yeah, so anyway. Uh, but yeah, we went to go play at final round. Uh, I choked it up really badly. Um, I, for some reason, p- said, oh, I'm going to drop Abel. And pick Zangief, even though I don't know shit about Zangief, because he's good against Rufus in this game or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that did not work out, and uh, I just got my ass beat. And then uh, he got 20-something K, and I got zero, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, so that's an experience in a nutshell of what I can remember without having a stroke, so, yeah. <laughs> did you actually like the game? Like, cross second? I actually loved the game. Really? It was actually really sick, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the format of a sick like having like a two v two fighting game tournament seems like like it would be really cool like mm-hmm. yeah but it died <laughs> Cap- I would say it died dude, Capcom had- killed it with the DLC bullshit <laughs> yeah dude I I I I I actually really really liked the game it was really fun it had a good flow and like momentum and stuff to it um but there was a time period like right after the game. Right after Cross Assault, the game released, there were some big problems, like, Cammy, like, jab, like, and just jabs were kind of out of the nutso, and so, yeah, no, there were some problems, then they fixed them a little too late, Mm -hmm. and now it's a really, really good game, but it was too little too late, right, so, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, first. Yeah, I remember that, there's, like, that famous video, right, of, like, uh, it's, like, Micross and Combo Fiend doing commentary, and they're, like, oh, look at... He brought his jabs all the way from Korea. Jab, 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 jab. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. So, um, transitioning a little bit. You you obviously were in the heart of the third strike scene back then, um, FFA and everything, um, and you're still playing these days somewhat, and you're observing the scene. It seems like. Um, how would you compare the scene now to back then? I mean, like, with, like, so, I mean, the scene's better now. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's not a jab at, like, the old, uh, at, like, back in the day, but it's just, it's better now. The The barrier to entry is, like, non-existent now. Uh, we have a goddamn league. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we have podcasts. We have a plethora of information at our fingertips for it, like, First Strike is better now, you know, um, all the hype stuff is actually recorded, 
where in like back in the day you saw something incredibly sick like you're just gonna have to get it from an old ass guy like me like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah on it second hand um like yeah you uh, it, i mean it's just in all senses of the word it's better now and that's not like i said a jab or or, or that it was bad back in the day it's just that like if you want to play third strike now's the time mm-hmm. and oddly enough you feel like uh yeah so we, i mean oh, as far as the scene goes like uh it's definitely i feel like it's more welcoming now i've heard some people say like i've actually heard people say in modern third strike like oh it's like difficult like to like get into the scene and like people aren't as welcoming or welcoming and i'm like where the fuck are you playing at cuz i feel like nowadays like everyone's welcome in third strike like i have people come up to me and ask me questions who i've never spoken before like oh what was this plus on block or like what and like i feel like that yeah. would never happen back in the day and first of all don't ever ask me that question because i don't fucking know but but like i i have heard seen people just like set new players aside like oh yeah like do this this is what you're doing great etc cetera, etc cetera. but like i feel like that would have never happened maybe back in like the 04 or 05 five days so well first of all back in the day like plus on block what do you what is that yeah yeah what the fuck is that so <laughs> right yeah um no i'm just kidding but like no i mean like it so i think it's definitely like lo- local scenes everything is more welcoming back in the day like i i almost got beat up numerous times jaha almost beat the living shit out of me mm. like um me and jaha cool i love jaha but like before I knew him, like, he almost, he almost squashed me, bro. <laughs> like, it, it's way more welcoming, uh, back, like, now than it ever was. But, like I say, in Third Strike, is one of those games, dude, like, there's communication through the game. Like, if you're a new player and you show up to the arcade and you just get your ass mollywopped, losing in Third Strike hard, when you lose hard in Third Strike, you lose hard. Like, in these newer games, like, you don't, you don't, you don't get the same feeling like when you get stomped in a newer game that you do in when you do in third strike so i could see that maybe that kind of like you know gives people a little it's hard to take l's especially when you're younger or new to fighting games it's kind of you kind of have to learn to take l's um especially if you're wanting to get better um so yeah i'm sure there's certain areas i'm sure if someone walks in that's new after I'm, you know, and, and sees me playing one of my good friends, you know, in Arizona, and I'm like, ah, you're a fucking idiot. Why would you do, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure, like, they might get that, like. That impression, yeah. That impression, but yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's not like it used to be. <laughs> so, Are there parts of, like, okay, we're comparing old and new. Are there parts of the scene where you feel like, oh, I wish we had kept that, though? Like, you know, maybe like, oh, the competitive fire. You know, is there anything from the old days where you're like, okay, well, that would be nice if we still had that? Yeah, well, I mean, I, yes, but at the same time, like, I get like, yeah, you can't be as hard on, you can't be just like, you suck, why would you ever do that? Like, you know, like, you know, you can't, like, you know, it, it's not... I, I do miss that competitive fire, like, especially because, like I said, like, you know, I, I, I like the shit talk. I like the, you know, I'll showboat or whatever, or, you know, I don't, I don't, I feed off of it because, like, I, I like communicating the game. Going back to that whole, like, you know, you know I caught, I, I caught your rhythm, like, now I gotcha kind of thing, you know, so, um, uh, I do miss that, um, but i mean at the same time like you know some of these new kids are like 19 like i'm not gonna sh- talk shit to a 19 year old like <laughs> you know what I mean? so, so i you know but uh yeah so other than that i mean i obviously i do miss like having fighting game arcades like yep. that is something that i don't think we'll ever get back and that was a sight to ho- behold right like that was I'm super fortunate to like be able to like spend a good amount of time there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so we kind of we and uh, yeah, and I want I know we kinda, we covered this briefly. Uh, I'm just going to agree that um, like having a national circuit, right? That's huge. Like no other, as far as I know, no other old fighting game has something like Dude, that. 
if if people don't get it by now that like we're so fortunate and and it's kind of a topic I want to talk about later, but like it's only gonna grow. Um, we you have a literal organization pushing and working on this league. Like if if you if you're looking for a competitive Street Fighter game that isn't Street Fighter Six, like Third Strike's the one, bro. Like that's the one. What do you think it is about Third Strike compared to other old fighting games where it just seems to have that kind of longevity and you know, it almost seems like it's growing at this point to me. Like, uh, you know, it's bigger now than when I started. You know, when I started in 2011, I thought, oh, I'm joining a dead game. You know, this will mm -hmm. be fun for like a year and, you know, we'll play OE for a year and then I'll go do something else. Um, right. But it's in a better state now than it was when I started uh, in 20, mm -hmm. when I was 2023. It keeps growing. So what what is different about Third Strike that allows that? Uh... Well, I don't know. <laughs> yes, I got a few guesses. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I, I I think it has to do with its mechanics and its system and its cast. Like, like to really boil it down, like to simplistic terms. Like, you know, the you know I see some of the newer games. Like, there's there's some pretty big like checkmate scenarios, mm -hmm. and in Third Strike, technically, technically. There's a few cases, but technically there's no absolute check checkmates mm -hmm. uh, scenarios, which is, to me, when I was, like, checking out other Street Fighter games and, like, watching other high level, it's like, huh, that's kind of cool. Like, I kind of like that. And so I think there, I think there's some type of allure to that. I also think that, like, because there are passionate players in the game and that, you know people making content for third strike and showing the beauty and the coolness and the gospel of third strike and all the little lores and legends and you know rom running through a hotel uh hallway like it's a good game like you know i think that just helped build and like you know create its own little strong uh backbone of third strike and you know when people jump in i think they realize there's a lot of maybe like culture and worth there and like i said when you do see yourself get better in third strike it's a really cool feeling mm -hmm. i've played a lot of different other fighting games and it's never felt the same when i've pushed past the plateau in those other games how it does feel when i do it in third strike i don't know why it's because it's how play third strike plays or whatever but that's that's i guess Part of it. Do you think maybe like the arcade portion has something to do with it? Because like for arcade or like th third trick purist, like you have to play on arcade, right? Like that's just the standard. Mm -hmm. Like we can all agree, like yeah, fight cade's good, console you can you know. But for the most part, if you're gonna meet up and you're gonna play someone at third strike, it's usually like at an arcade that type of setting. Like I think mm -hmm. maybe something that that has something to do with it. Like you're having to gather in in person, play on this machine. Like it creates this. I don't know, atmosphere, I guess you want to say. Well, yeah, dude, like, just having... I, I think so, because, yeah. like, you know, you're going to have people that play online a bunch, and then they do show up to an offline event or offline every once in a while. And I think that, like, hooks them, like, oh, yeah. Like, this is, like, the game aside, like, this is something that's like tangible and kind of like a little bit of a community that you feel a part of. Um, and it's not only that, but like, <clears throat> it's something that you can work at, um, think about, and then get in person again and show your stuff or learn more or just see people you haven't seen before, or learn off of that. Like, I think it's a good, uh, what do you call it, loop? Uh, it's a good feedback loop yeah. as far as, like, every once in a while you get to go out to, like, an arcade and play some real Third Strike, and it's it's almost, like, always a reinforcement of 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 that, so, yeah. Okay, so we've kind of, de uh, we've at this point, we've alluded to online Third Strike five or six times. <laughs> well, let's just take a bite of the apple. How, what are your thoughts on online third strike? Uh, how close is it to the real game? Uh, do you think it's useful? What are your thoughts in general? Whatever you want to talk about. 
Yeah, so, well, is it useful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it close to the offline game? In my opinion, no. But that's because the the variance is so large. Like if everyone was on 15 ping playing each other mm -hmm. then yeah, I would say, okay, it's, it's get It's pretty, pretty close. Right. With, mm. with some stuff, but I'm telling you, bro, there's still Yuri and teleporting with his dash. <laughs> like, like Yuri and dash online. I'm sorry, dude. Like if I'm half a second slow in the head, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like he, his ass is grabbing me. Like, it's just, you know what I mean? So like, there's still that. Um, and the problem with that, okay, so the problem with some stuff working that isn't necessarily like, you know, building matchup experience or stuff like that is stuff like that will happen. And then that reinforces that player to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. So aside from people like, uh, that are, that, you know, play a lot online, like XO, Tenren, um, um, Neem, like, but you gotta understand, they played before it was really Fightcade, like, right? Mm -hmm. They've played in the arcade, right? So they, I feel like, you know, people like that, they, they kind of get like, okay, I got away with that, that probably maybe not have worked online, but the newer players that play on Fightcade, like, oh, yeah, I can just dash and throw this guy every time. <laughs> okay, age is time, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's the only part. If 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 you're newer and you're not cognizant of what you're getting away with, um, it, it, it reinforces some bad stuff. Um, and then, you know, at the same time, then someone might think they're hot shit. But they never show up to a tournament, <laughs> yeah. so to to really test their to test their might. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great tool. Like like I said, bubbles are. Uh, Envy told me it's like getting reps. I mm -hmm. think it's good for getting that like swath of character experience, right? Because mm -hmm. um, like you know, I don't play a lot of Oros locally, mm -hmm. but I play them. But I'll get to play them on Fightcade, you know don't get to play a lot of Makoto's locally, but I get to lose to him on Fightcade all the time. And while Makoto is broken as shit on Fightcade, <laughs> uh, at least now I start to build that, like, okay, these are the Makoto paths. These are what Makoto's do. This is the general game plan. Okay. In this situation, whatever you do, just don't do this, and you won't at least lose right that second kind of thing. So I, I think it's super valuable. It's super good. It has a lot of warrant uh, to it, mm -hmm. um, but I guess I'm kind of like the wrong guy to like ask about like uh, just because I grew up in an arcade and like because of the type of player like in Fightcade when I'm losing to somebody like I can't like look around the cabin and be like oh this guy's a mouth breather okay that's why he's <laughs> doing that because. You know, like some people's mistakes and like what they think is good isn't actually good. If <laughs> in the sense of like, was that sick? Because he understood? Or was that just him like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like mashing something out or whatever? So for me, offline, like, I, you know, I'm very vibey. Like, okay, I can see how this guy is. Like, you know, I'm for better or worse, that's, I guess, one of my strengths. On 5K, like, you're just, most of you guys are just going to, Womp, just destroy me. I'm a D rank player, so yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually, so I don't think you're the wrong guy to ask at all. I, I, I think I agree with you. Um, so how do I, how do I put this? When I was starting off, I was living in Alaska, so I could only play online. And then, you know, at the time, the you know, this is like 2011. Still, there's SRK forums and like Ryan and Yuki are posting there. Yi sometimes posts there. And the attitude at the time is like all these online superstars, the uh, Exos, the the Neemans, the Tenrens, the Cruises, mm -hmm. are all fucking, it's all garbage. It's all online third strike. It's not real. When they mm -hmm. ever play on an arcade cabinet, it's going to be different. And at the time, mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, well, let's just see, right? And then they start yeah. winning. And I'm like, okay, it looks like they can play after all. But like you said, all those guys have arcade experience. They didn't just play yeah. online all the time. Mm -hmm. And now uh, I'm older, you know, because at the time, it's like, oh, that seems like, a little elitist to me. I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, that was my perspective. Sure. 
But at yeah. the, now, when you know, I kind of see exactly what you're talking about with a lot of these young players who have pretty much never touched an arcade cabinet, uh, especially with some of the faster, more lag-friendly characters, are playing kind of egregious. And I'm like, should I tell them? Like, am I going to just come off as a salty old person? Yeah, uh, you like, are. <laughs> yeah right like but i mean I gotta... like it's kind of the truth and kind of not like yeah but yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i and i and i have to investigate my own motives there i'm like okay mm -hmm. why am i gonna tell them but then yeah, i right. think like you know wouldn't i want someone to tell me if i was fucking zooming across the screen with a bookie just doing whatever mm -hmm, you know yeah. like uh i guess i don't know where that story ends it's just that no i i, I totally well, feel where you're coming from well no okay so like like i like i brought up exo i brought up neiman i brought up penren like they're I think they got a lot of flack in the early days. But you got to understand, Neiman sucked. Neiman <laughs> sucked back then. Like, he would play in the arcade, and he just sucked. <laughs> but he's the fucking god now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, so... so. I think some people saw Neiman, and were like, okay, well, I've seen you play in the arcade, bro. And that, Even though it was years ago and something like that. There's no way there's like this much of a difference. Lo and behold, there pretty much is. Mm -hmm. Like he's he is that godlike, right? Um Tenren, Tenren was like, well, he's fucking never loses a fucking set online, uh, unless it's against Chun. Sure. Uh and um there's no way he can be that good uh offline. Uh two sides of that coin. If what if the best Ibuki player shows up to your arcade and you've never played a good Ibuki player, you're gonna get your ass Dunkey. beat. Yep. Okay, yep. it's just gonna happen. Now, and, and to ten runs credit, he was he was amazing. He showed up to I think it was Dungeon, and he just he just beat everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, if he stayed and showed up every day like the rest of us, I don't. And ten runs a god. I don't want to <laughs> like, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like I don't think that would have continued. Not in the sense of like he would have lost more than he won, but I don't think it would have looked like it did that first day. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I think half of my tournament wins was like, oh shit, I've never played a good Alex before, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so like there is an element to that, right? And then XO, I don't really, whatever. Like, all I know <laughs> is offline, I'm 100% against him, so, nice. you know. Love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to, I just had to throw that in there, just because of shooting the shit. But no, I, I went to Canada. Uh, uh, I think was it Canada Cup. Yeah, it was a I Canada so. Cup, and EXO was there. Mm. And when it was on console, <laughs> <laughs> so it was already like, like it's like I beat EXO, and then I lose to like an Alina player that like you know, do full <laughs> combos. So it's like, like my my win is like automatically like nixed out. You know? <laughs> But that no, like, I mean like it was like I, a console on LCD, right? That was like 30th anniversary. Oh, it was. Oh, dude, I, I you know, it, it was. Uh, yeah, it was bleach in the eyes kind of thing. But yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean like I think, I think that's part of it. Like I think like I'm not a big like if you're this godlike player and you only show up like every few months. Like, ah, I do my shit. Okay, I'm out before I get downloaded. Like, yeah. I like, like, I, I'm just more like, no, you stay here and keep beating my ass. Yeah. I want to learn more about, you know, I want to like, you know, so like, I, I, so that's like my attitude about it. And it, it, uh, they're all obviously amazing players. They've, they've won, but at the same time, we've had purists win, win too, right? Mm. So I, I think it's a mixed bag. I don't think everyone. I think Tenren, uh, you know, EXO and, and Neem are kind of like the the all stars of that like online player thing. So you can't extend that to everybody, right? Uh, you know, um, but yeah, no. I mean, yeah, as it's cl it's very clear that you get amazing players from both sides now. <laughs> yeah. What uh, what characters are the most boosted online? Okay, no shade, but a bookie, a hundred percent. I'm sorry, dude. Like, I, I like, I, I don't like. There's something about the walk speed, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, I can't tech an abuki throw for the life of me online. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Like, I just can't do it. It's just not gonna happen. Maybe I'm special. I mean, I probably am. <laughs> uh, but there's, 
So, especially when you're playing a shitty low tier or whatever, like, those little micro adjustments I desperately need. Because mm -hmm. if I'm not already outclassing you in skill, those little things I really need to make this an even playing field. Like, I do need my one red parry around to work out so I can take half your life. Like, I do need that extra half a millisecond to tech a throw because your walk speed is, like, just fast, right? <laughs> Where at least offline, it's a little easier to react. Um, and then, yeah, dude, like, if, you got, if you're a zippy character uh, and the screen lags for half a second, shit, dude, you're on the other side. You're, like, fucking, you know, doing cross-ups. You're doing shit. Like, you know, and then... So, yeah, like, there's, you know, uh, Makoto. Mm -hmm. Makoto is just a little obnoxious. If it like you know, in the sense of like her normals are so good in third strike, her normals are actually so good. Yeah, if you're good yeah. with Makoto and you have good spacing and actually good footsie with Makoto, god damn, they are good. <laughs> now, just take a just take a second or two away or whatever from the guy trying to like react to that if you're actually good with Makoto's spacing, like it's it's rough. Um, mm -hmm. and just you know, she can just grab you and then okay, next round kind of thing. But, um, Yurian. Yeah, of course. Yurian, just because the fact of if you're in the corner and you get an Aegis on top of you, you have that light less time to go high, to, like, block the high-low, and then, you know, that's half your life. And if the Yurian's good, he's going to have another Aegis right after that, you know. Mm. Um, I mean, but, you know, for the most part, every character gets away with some type of bullshit. There's some characters that are just like dumpster uh online but uh i would say those are my three. Oh, and kind of deadly okay, like interesting because because dart shot is fucked up already <laughs> so like just the just the andrew getting hit overhead kind of thing like you know what i mean i i think dart shots really fast and it's hard to react to on offline mm -hmm. like almost impossible so online it's just like I'm holding up or I'm holding down sometimes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. If it's above, like, 50 ping, like, you know, I can't... I would love to say that all my amazing blocks are because, like, I can see it and react. <laughs> but it's, it's just intuition of, like, understanding the player, right? Yeah, and yeah. that, I mean, that, that speaks to... So that kind of, like, segues into background, right? Like, you are an arcade player, primarily, who has sometimes dabbled online. Uh, like I was mostly an online player, and then I had a you know I played offline sometimes. Um, but for me, like when you describe deadly dart shot, I'm like, oh yeah, you just guessed there. Like, what are you talking? You know, who would who would try to react? Like, of course you had, of course that's just a total guess. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it might be a guess, and I might be on acid, but in my <laughs> mind, there is a small amount of time where, unless they have the perfect setup where it's a pure guess and they have a perfect setup, like. You get a, a half a second, and half a second is larger than you actually get. But you do get a micro little position of, of I don't see me getting hit by a short short. I'm gonna go up, mm -hmm. um, and that's just because of range, right? If they're a point blank, you're just kind of that's a guess anyway, right? But um, anyway, yeah, I I know I was talking to Yuki about this too because specifically he did, he's not a fan of online either, and he's like. The best example he used, and I'm probably going to fuck it up because I'm not good at repeating stuff, but he's like, the difference between Dudley's jump and Twins' jumps is four frames, right? Like, can you imagine Dudley, Dudley jumping at you with Roundhouse and Yun jumping mm -hmm. at you with Roundhouse? Like, Yun jumping at you with Roundhouse, I don't give a fuck. I can deal with this. Like, easy, you know? Right. Dudley, though, you know, and the difference of that is four frames, and then you put online into that, like... Brutal. It, it makes the character so much more difficult to deal with. Like, and not not only just Dudley, but just like the game in general, right? Like, those frames like matter so much in Third Strike. So, yeah. right, the things that you could sneak away with, or or like, pretty much try to like, I can I can fight against this. Like, not to the best success rate, but I can fight against it. Now take a few frames off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now now it's just like okay, I don't <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. But no, I mean, I don't know, dude. It's it's a weird it's fight Kate online is just a, a a weird a weird thing. Um Oh, Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. No, no, no. no, no I look, 
I just just gotta throw it in there just because when you get hit with the <clears throat> with dark shot, it's just always painful. That's just you know thrown to my side. But no, um, like I would love to see some of these online cats, and hopefully some of these, hopefully these jazzy circuits that are that have online qualifiers don't aren't won by like Neiman or Tentran or like <clears throat> because. I want to see these people that I've only ever seen online mm -hmm. win and then come out to the tournament, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's wishful thinking, you know, yeah. one of those, one of the big dogs, XO, uh, with his Dudley short, short <laughs> yeah, machine gun, uh, you know, is, is probably going to, you know, take it. But, <clears throat> you know, here's hoping. Mm -hmm. You hear that, Mutant? You got to ban Tenren, Nika, XO from the online quals. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta let the kids have a chance. So, so segueing into that, what do you what do you think about? You know, we have the Jazzy Circuit now. What do you think about having an online qualifier too? Actually, right? There's two two people, two spots. I know we just had a fucking whole podcast over this, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, two, I think that's sp right. two spots for online. What, what? How do you feel about that? It's great. It's needed. Um, it's yeah. like it's absolutely the way to do it. <clears throat> um. You gotta give these cat like it's it's the it's it's the right kind of carrot for these online cats to like, hey, all right, you're not gonna come out even though you're a big dog online. Well, you should win an online tournament and now you should come out. Like it's kind of mm -hmm. like the perfect like it's the perfect kind of like. All yeah. right, here you guys go. Come on now, <laughs> let's 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 come out and like enjoy some real third strike and. Uh, win it or take your L and just be a part of the hype when you're witnessing like cool shit in person. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to see it. Uh, no, I agree. I totally agree. Um, and I actually think we might have a chance to that. I know Kang has told me like he's not he's most likely not going to play in these online events just because like either he won't come or if he does come he wants to be that asshole who's in the last two pools blocking you from one of the slots, you know. I think he really gets something out of that, I yeah. guess. Really gets yeah. his willies going, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's very possible, right? Like, I know Tenrin's not going to play in any online tournament, I don't think. I mean, he never has anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so could be, right? I mean, you still have Nika and Neiman as options who mm -hmm. could suck those slots up, but uh, it could be that we see one of those online superstars take it. So, yeah. yeah. Actually, no. I'm not going to say it. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So now, so now we're still on the subject of Jazzy and the upcoming uh -huh. year. Um, Two-parter question. So I know you, for the last auto qualifier, you flew out Bubbles, Envy, and Daisuke. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to talk about that, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how that went. Um, and also, I know you guys have an auto qualifier coming up. And uh, you, you mentioned to us before the show that we should go check out who's registered. And uh, Neiman himself... Is on the registration list, so yeah, I'd love to hear all about that as well. Yeah, so as far as this year's stuff, like one person will be Neiman. All things going well, as long as you know, he can't as long as he can, as long as there's no weird shit happening or that he should be there. Um, so the, it's already going to be a gnarly tournament. Mm -hmm. Part of my reason of getting Neiman out here. Or uh, you know, trying to coax him and you know, you know, help. Um, and it's not just me; it's it's it, it, full disclosure for this time around. Uh, the Arizona Cats came to me and was like, "Hey, can you help try to like help us facilitate getting this stuff done? Because we really want Neiman to come. Okay. Like they are hungry. They want to play really skilled, high-level players offline. I do them a kind of a disservice because I only play." A Q now. I only play Q now. Like they don't get real off like high tier, high tier, like experience. Um. Uh. So. Uh. Yeah. Um. Not even my idea this time. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, Neiman. Uh. Is hopefully going to be one of them for sure. Um. Mulling some other things over. If I'm lucky, we'll see another one that you'll never imagine you would have seen okay um, okay okay but, uh, we'll see 
We'll see what I can do. Uh, but yeah, back to the other ones. Like that all started with like you know, uh, you know, going back to like me being objectively poor growing up. Um, you know, and I'm actually I'm doing very well for myself now. Um, and you know, part of that is because like I owed a third strike in the sense of like third strike really taught me how to think analytically like focus on what is actually important to achieve what I want to achieve and and to understand how to ingest and break things down and it's paid dividends for my uh personal life when I got those chances when when luck strike I was able to have the juice to back it up basically um so and, and so it was kind of just my like you know like thanks third strike and etc and also like you know my community that i'm a part of now in arizona is super passionate um honestly one probably the best community i'm just gonna say like you texas motherfuckers i've been out there a while <laughs> you guys, I'm just kidding. texas is actually really sick like yeah. i gotta hand it to you yeah. all but no like arizona community is like it, it's it's one of the best for sure and they're super dedicated and passionate um and you know they got the fight in them uh, and they're all and they're all getting better too which is cool to see back in the socal days you would see people playing for years and like how do you still suck like, <laughs> like how is this impossible um so anyway yeah it was just my like kind of little bit of repaying uh in my own way and you know giving uh arizona a little bit more exposure um to something that would probably never happen east coast players playing you know arizona players probably would have not happened you know in person um so i thought that was kind of cool um uh, but yeah, they're all, you know, Bubbles, MV, uh, Dice K, all super cool, cool guys. I really wish I got to actually play them, uh, <laughs> when they came over. Like, that was real, like, cause like, one of the, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get to fly them over, spend all this money, and then like, I'm gonna get to like, sit down and like, really grind some matches with them. But <laughs> like, I didn't get to like, play them at all, I was like, shit. Uh, so, um... But yeah, no, like it was it was just cool to see like the mix of people like jumping in and seeing how uh we did against them, they did against us and and they were great really good players. I I, I wish you know maybe they would fly out again um to see like okay, now how did they match up mm. to the people that have grown and stuff like that. But um but yeah, so that was kind of just how it happened. I just got a wild hair up my ass. I was like well, I can do it, and it sounds fun. Yeah, I think people would benefit from it. Let's do it, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how that happened. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, um, back. So I can't quite identify, right? Because from my point of view, I'm thinking like, okay, how do we make sure Nika does not win this Texas auto qualifier? <laughs> because he's won the last two. Yeah. So I'm at this point, I'm thinking like, okay, how we got to lie to him about the date. Be like, oh, sorry, like last minute, <laughs> Jazzy uh, changed the date. So yeah, make sure you fly in, I don't know, two weeks later. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it's kind of like, I might have a chance to win the auto quali qualifier if Neiman doesn't show up or like, you know, or my... Or my demon Juan. I don't know what to deal with Juan, but like Juan. he is like Juan's a fucking demon. monster, dude. I love Juan. Yeah, like, good. he's a he's you a know beast. like oh like I like at TFC or whatever. Like I like smack around at RX, like smack around this other guy, and Juan get and just why am I gonna beat your ass? Because I'm just gonna like I don't know. He's my demon, you know. <laughs> but no, like yeah, it's kind of stupid of me as far as like in my own interest of like to like get the best players to come to my qualifiers, you know, like dice, like flying out dice, K, which is an amazing player. And he won it, you know, like yep. it's kind of stupid to me, but like, I, I, you know, I got that dog in me. Like I want to, <laughs> like, I want to play you. Like I like, and I want to do it in a tournament and I want to, you know what I mean? So I'm not saying that I think I can beat like all these players, yeah. but, um, if you, if you give me a, if you give me an inch, I'm going to take it and I'm going to, you know, so, uh, yeah, so no, I, for me, I like the thrill of the fight. I like the, the, you know, I like the scrap. 
is basically <laughs> what it boils down to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. So, speaking of scrapping, playing in tournaments. So I know you have been so. Of the, so in my brain, I like the modern era of Third Strike is like. The two TFCs are like, you know, two huge tournaments, followed mm -hmm. by all the Jazzy years. So now we've had, I think, four Jazzy years, right? So we've had like six big ones. You've been at several of them, and I think you have had like a really great tournament run at almost all the ones you went to. So I, we, I looked it up on the bracket beforehand, so I was like, okay, because uh, I had vague memories of you doing well at these. <laughs> the TFC 2017, you beat Beatran, Jibbo Sherwin all in mm -hmm. a row. Uh, Jazzy 2... Uh, you beat Eat and Tommy, which I mean, Alex Chun Li is basically impossible. Uh, I'm glad so, you admit it. Yeah, no, that match. I thought, you know, I do what I can to, down, to downplay Chun Li for the uh, Chun Li army, but there's some yeah. matchups where you just have to admit this match is fucking impossible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, do you think, is there like an extra gear you hit in tournament? How do you play tournament? How do you play so well in tournament and beat all these people? Yeah, no, I mean, like, I kind of goes back to what I'm saying, like, so there's, I, I'm a very, like, like, energy, like, 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 player. Like, if I can, like, tap into, like, your conscious a little bit, like, because we're across, the, like, you know, I'm going to be a better and different player. That's just kind of what I thrive off of. Um, you know, if the crowd goes, goes wild, like, you're more screwed than if, like, you know, or if people are booing me, that you're probably more screwed. Like, you know, that's just the kind of person I am. Like, when things aren't hype and all of that, like, you know, you literally will bore me to death. Like, you'll probably, you like, I, I'm, it's, my, you know, it's my weakness. It's always been my weakness. And, you know, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, just literally turtle and get four genegens this round. Even though it's technically the smarter, smartest, most strategic thing to do. Don't give me a chance to red parry anything. Don't give me a chance to uh, do a good call out. Like it's, while it's technically the mo like the more strategic, better thing to do, it it is a hundred percent my own weakness. I lose interest fast, and I get bored, and I'm just like, meh. Like you know, like <laughs> fuck it, like <laughs> you know. But like if you if if I get momentum and then starts. And like something starts to amp me up or hype me up, like I really feed into it, and that's that's my strength, I guess. Um, the like you know, and uh, and obviously, offline is where all that hype and that boot and that crowd interaction and all that stuff like plays into. So that's why I'm a much better player offline mm -hmm. than online. Like you know, I've played. Uh, Resolve online. I've never won a match. Never. <laughs> I've never won a match against Resolve offline. But we play here locally, and then I send them to losers. Like it's just that's just the kind of player I am. I don't. I don't. I can't change it. I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, Resolve did come back and beat me. But that's my other weakness: is that the longer the day goes on, I am gassed. Like I am a. I am a uh, like a supernova type of person, like like boom, 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 and then I I need like I have low mental energy, like I need to recharge, and then and then after I recharge, I'm I'm good. So that's why, like, if you face me early in a bracket, it's you're playing someone different than like once I get into the top eight, like I am I, it's my own probably issues but i am mentally like gassed like i'm ready to go home already like i'm like i don't even care about like third strike right now like <laughs> after like the four hour mark mm -hmm. my brain is just like like i got issues man like, <laughs> my brain is just, like done. so yeah um so i know you went to gutter trash a few years back mm -hmm. um how was your experience playing in europe uh, with the British and the French and all those guys. Yeah, dude. Hey, dude. The, the, okay, so it's funny. The French are fucking good. Mm -hmm. The French are good at third strike. Um, so is all. So is the other cats I played. Um, I kind of linked up with... Uh, I've been drinking wine, so you're going <laughs> to... Who's the, the player? 
Cactu? You talking about Cactu? Cactu, yes, Cactu, yeah. the man. Yeah, uh-huh. I leave, so he he kind of like gave me all the all the four one one and all that, and like you know I like going to travel and stuff. So every time I travel, I'm like, oh, is there any third strike around? And like mm-hmm. you know, so that's kind of how that happened. Um, uh, lots of good players out there actually, for sure. Um, Neobon, mm. like the yeah. love of my life. Like, <laughs> like, dude, dude, you wouldn't. When I talk about like people that are like, you want to watch someone play third strike, Neobon is so exciting to watch. Mm-hmm. Like, oh man, like if you like Neobon, man, god, so pissed I lose to him twice. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, and then it, it was great, dude. Like, I, you know, I did all, I did what I typically do break into top eight and then kind of like still do pretty good but like you can kind of see i'm like drooling and like falling asleep <laughs> at the end of it kind of thing but i did i did pretty good i was pretty hyped about it um uh lost to uh i think it was a young player in and yaz and mm-hmm. you know chun lee like you know if you lose as chun you're you got problems so <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah yeah <laughs> i just really gotta really gotta lay it in because lance is on this so but uh no um uh Yaz is pretty good um I didn't play any of other, of his other characters so I'm just gonna group him in the same group that Lance is in uh <laughs> with the Chun Li players <laughs> but no I, sorry I love talking shit um <laughs> but, yeah like they had a really good young player they had some fun exhibition matches everyone there was super super cool like and uh. It's just cool to see, like, they had a recent tournament somewhere in the Europe. The TSP? Uh, recently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, they got their own, like, strong scene. So, like, it was super sick. And, like, if anyone has the chance to, like, line up their vacation during one of those Third Strike tournaments, you should totally do it. Like, they're, they're all super cool guys. How do you feel the skill level stacks up against the U.S.? Like, just as good, not worse, better? <laughs> Oh, first spicy question of the night. I don't think it's that spicy, right? Like, I mean, that's a, that's the thing with Third Strike, right? Like, if you're like, oh, I'm going to go play in this city or whatever. It's like, how good are they? Like, how do they stack up? You know what I mean? So, I don't think it's that spicy. Yeah, no, hey, so, I think, I think, uh, I think the U.S. has way more and better mid-tier players. Okay. And then their top-tier players are comparable to our top-tier players. Mm-hmm. In the sense of like, is there a better Makoto than Neobon? Yes. Uh... Outside of Japan. Yeah, I mean, hard I'm to say. Ask you spicy questions now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh... who's our equivalent? I guess like Mommy's the best Makoto yeah, probably, in uh, probably Mommy. America. Yeah. 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 I mean, Mommy's Mommy's great. Yeah. <laughs> Neobon's a Neobon, special guy. Neobon. You gotta have the. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, mommy. Yeah, I, I mean, I can no, never I mean, say anything like, bad about Neobon. Uh, he beat me the last two times, so I have to say he's the best. Yeah, see, there you go. Like, so, like, you got Neobon, you got Yaz, which is just super, super consistent, you know? So, like, they they have the juice on the, on the top end. I would say we have a lot more strong middle grade players, um, but but that's not to say they have a few people that are nipping at the hills and doing good, good stuff, too. So, I guess... I can answer your question that way. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, um, okay, one more question, and then we'll hit uh, the questions from the chat and then do some rapid-fire questions at the end, and we'll call it a podcast. Sweet. Awesome. Um, okay, so Third Strike was just announced for EVO Japan. It's like a main event. Do um, you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I think... Um... There's there's good stuff hap- there's good stuff happening. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, like uh, if you've ever been interested in Third Strike, now is the time to jump on this. Um, that like whether you want to think it's the organization of Jazzy putting in the work to get Third Strike into places like that. Or Evo realizing that Third Strike is just not going to go away, and that it's like literally responsible for one of their most famous moments. Like, whatever side of the coin you land on there, like, if 
news like that is a little bit of a clue for you that this is going to keep, you know, continuing. Um, and, and now's the time to, to join a really good community. Um, you should, you should take it as such. Awesome. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I think it's, I mean, obviously in third strike in Japan has always been, at least my impression, obviously I don't know that much about, I've been to Japan a few times, but I don't know like their inner workings. My impression from visiting various arcades there is it's one of the biggest games still. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I think they're just still playing. So of course. <laughs> did they ever announce like what the uh, did they announce what the format is? Because like, I think it'd be interesting if it's like a singles tournament, right? Because Japan doesn't really have that like singles level tournament, like a national tournament, so, as far as I know, anyway. But you know, you have co op, and then you used to have SBO, which was all team format, you know, character lock things like that. So I'm curious to see if it is like a, a, a singles tournament where one player, you know, goes through the bracket, everything, no teams, character lock, see what they do there. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, honestly, just watching, I you know, I'm I'm a bad Third Strike student. I, I don't watch a lot of match videos anymore. Um, but obviously watching Japan play Third Strike is always a treat. Um, so I think just to give it give it its spot there is like a no-brainer to me. So it's going to be cool to see them play in like a real tournament real tournament AP <laughs> from that like kind of has to do with like kind of brings it into the community of what we deal with and etc so mm -hmm. for sure okay uh ray you want to do our um our questions from the chat yeah yeah we can hop into the questions so first question is from exo how does it feel to have the best third site clip on the internet uh exo hugo versus dinges rio i don't even know what the fuck <laughs> yes. this is Hold on, let me go delete that real quick. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I dude, I like when I when I have the chance, I like to jump on and like see what these crazy people are doing. Um, but uh, EXO hitting a full screen meat squasher on a Denjin Ryu player. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not surprised. Denjin Ryu player, like what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but dude, that was that was some kind of like voodoo he must have like sent through like the interwebs or something to be able to hit a full screen meat squasher on Denges. like it's just one of those things that shouldn't happen <laughs> right but there he does doing exo stuff you know uh, yeah that's a, that's a great moment in online you know that one goes down to the annals of online third strike history right yeah for sure mm -hmm. All right, so next question from Nika. Legend has it you still look away from the cab when Pyro does something sick. Confirm or deny? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's confirmed. Uh, <laughs> it, the You know, at, for me, once I'm considered, I guess, your friend or close to it or whatever or acquaintance, you're getting nothing but disrespect from me. <laughs> so, yes, yes, every time. That's another one of those, uh, what do you call it, the hood classic moments. That's yeah. one of your big ones. <laughs> I'd say, like, you know, the GGPO video, the uh, look away while Pyro does something video. Uh, mm -hmm. Pairing Chun-Li Super with your feet, of course. A big one. <laughs> a big moment in first strike history. Yeah. Dude, oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, like, a bleeding heart. Like, I'm super uplifting, you know, like, uh, about anybody that's, like, close to me and all that um but you know i am kind of harsh and brash in the in the first level like you know you're you're gonna get nothing but disrespect but yeah um you know i'll give you a job send you a joystick do whatever like you know i uh you know once you get past the silliness you know i'm actually not too bad <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, who's the best third strike player you've ever played, and who's your biggest rival in the game? Um, you know what's I've played. I I was lucky enough to play a a decent amount of third strike players. Um, I, oh man, like from even from Japan's. Uh, I was just lucky enough to be showing up when 
Japan uh, players rolled around. Dude, honestly, maybe I think it might be Yakun. No, like, Yakun, yeah. Uh, he, his, his pre-adjustment to me to it's like he knew I was gonna adjust, and did a pre-adjustment to it, and he did that multiple times very quickly, uh, in, in the span of like three matches. And I'm like, ooh, he adjusts really fast, faster than than I do, and that's one of like one of my strengths is like that I feel is like I was like, ooh, that that didn't feel good that. How did he know? How did he? How did you know I was gonna adjust to that one already? Like, yeah, I, I think, I think that's probably the mo- the biggest, the one of the, one of the times I was just like, ooh, ooh, it is a monster on the other side of the cabinet. Like, yeah. yeah. All right. And what uh, was it? Oh, the, the other part was uh, who is your third strike rival? Oh God. Um. I mean, back in the day, dude. I think, who, who, who always? It was always Mr. Bean, dude. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Bean, for whatever reason, like he had my number, like, mm-hmm. and I would just doing some chick shit, and it was like doing go. But dude, no, he just always pulled it out. Back in the day, Mr. Bean, like, and people might not know Mr. Bean, but he's actually for the amount of work he puts in, is like, like. He's just a talented dude in in, in in general. So, like, you know, he was able to do that in Third Strike. He, he was really good. Um, and then I guess now it's, like, Juan probably thinks of me of, like, just some scrub. Like, <laughs> just, uh, this, this is a guy I never, I never lose to. Um, but for some reason, but, you know, like, Juan's great. But, like, I dump on, like, gods all the time. But yet Juan is just like, get out of the way. Like, <laughs> you know, like somehow, like he just has me, right? He's my demon. So I would say if like, if I had a, like, if I looked at a, at a bracket and there was all heavy hitters in it and like Juan would be the one where I'm just like, <sighs> like, like, you know, like demon, get away. Like I, put me in the other side of the bracket or something. I think it would be Juan at the moment. Yeah, Juan's sick. He's always, uh, yeah. His engine is crazy, dude. He's he's a fun player to play around. Good dude too. I love one. I love one. So yeah, oh, yeah. that that's the worst part is yeah. that he's such a cool, cool yeah. dude. Like, why can't you let me actually hate you instead of just hate your friend? <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, mutant asked, who would win in a first to five round robin? Lance Wax or Rennick? <laughs> I think I, I, I think I get la- la- last place. Mutant. Yeah, you do. Mutant asked that. Oh, mutant did. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's there there's mutant stirring the pot. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't like I, I give I like wax. You you're good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, you're getting my, that's right. I I think I'm just too old and I've played yeah. a thousand fucking yuns like yeah. you know, and I play characters that if I do get a red parry like that rounds you know probably mine right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also do zany shit with Jinny Jin, which I know you know better. <laughs> like you just like you know be a little disciplined. I think you'll probably be beat me. But anyway, uh, Lance, um, John, I think I would probably lose. But didn't you lose the Duralath last I sure time did. I saw you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even get to Renick. I just lost the Duralath. So. It's always a chance, know, and you beat man. Tommy as well. So maybe, maybe the real lesson here is Chun Alex has actually been five five all along. <laughs> <laughs> well, jokes on y'all. I only exclusively play Q now. I quit <laughs> Alex, so. um, which is which. I it's probably a worse match, but I actually actually enjoy the match more now, sure. for, for whatever reason. So um, I would probably lose, um, but I would have Lance. Um, you know, his his butt butt speaker would tighten a little bit, I think, a few times, you know. <laughs> probably get probably probably has some good matches, but uh I think I think Chun would be hard to overcome for sure. Chun's a great character. I yeah, mean, you, last place. Like no discredit to Lance, like he, he's got the good I mean you're just a smart player, right? Like 
Wow. Okay. Tell, tell me more. Tell me more. I don't yeah. Know. No, I, don't I know mean, yeah, you're a smart player and you pair that with like the best weapon in the business. Like that's a winning formula, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think this podcast no, but, is uh, over, dude. I think the podcast I would is over. It's <laughs> our I final episode. Love, here, here's, here's the real question. I would love to see you play me with any other character mm. and see how that goes. Yeah, so I, that's something I've been thinking about lately. And mm-hmm. Ray's always like, oh, you're too much of a pussy. But I'm like, yes. you know, I've been playing for 10 years. I feel like I kind of found my where I'm going to end up in American Third Strike. You know, like, I, I'm i not going to beat Nika and Yuki. Like, it's just not going to happen. So, like, what's the point? Like, am I just going to keep playing Chun-Li every year and just make top eight and then lose to those guys every year? No, maybe it's time for Lance Yang. So let's oh, see. Let's Lance see if Yang. I okay. have the cuts to do yeah. it. Yang. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's my second best, I think. Right? Ken or Yang, probably. Ray, what do you yeah, think? Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably your Yang. Your Ken sucks, dude. I don't know what to tell okay, you. Thank you. Like, yeah. Let's go with Yang. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, have, I have thought about the idea of, like, why don't I start entering tournaments with, like, every character I play and then whatever. You know, if I lose, it's fine. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. Option select. Okay, yeah. well, if you play Yang, then you're 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 losing the worst. Then <laughs> wax. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. Thanks, Mewin. <laughs> really, really bring the dog out. Oh, we got another one here. I'm going to add this one to the uh, chat questions here. I'll just post them there, but continue, Ray. Yeah, so Doc asks, uh, I know it's the fighter in us. Some don't like the suggestion. Do you take breaks? How long do you take them, and what made you come back to the game? Uh, did you have a refresh mindset while playing your opponents offline and online? So, first question: Did you take breaks from the game? Uh, yeah, some of it is by choice. Some of it is because life likes to bend you over, because that's how life is. Mm-hmm. Uh, nowadays, it would only be by choice. Um, you know, just because I'm I'm pretty fortunate now. Um, but no, I I. So there will be times where I literally feel unbeatable and then, and, and yeah, I like, I'm like winning like 99% of my matches, even on fight gate. Right. And then there will be days where I like, doesn't matter who I'm playing. I'm just somehow going to fuck it up. Like to me, that's a note to be like, all right, you got to take a step back. Like, let let the air clear or whatever the fog or whatever it is like take a step back like and 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 whether it's just don't think about it at all or i i like to do this just because i'm a little bit of a thinker i guess you could say is that like i like to think about like the i like to think about it like okay, like, oh, well, that's interesting. What if I do do this micro adjustment? Like, you know, slightly walk back before I anti-air with down medium punch. And then, you know, just weird shit like that, right? Um, so that helps me take a break from it because, like, well, at least I can think about it and, like, play with ideas. Uh, and then that at least kind of gives me a, something to look forward to when I do decide to come back next week or, or whatever, right? Um, so I, yeah, I think it's important to, to take breaks when you, I think in the general sense, when you find yourself losing and you can realize that your self thought is not positive and it's like either angry or like whatever the case may be that you should be able to hopefully recognize the older you get about like, um, just things that you repeat like whatever it's oh i'm an idiot or whatever the thing is or what like when like once you realize that your like flow inside is going the wrong way like that's when you should take a step back and like like come back fresh i guess you should say yeah all right i remember uh, i was talking to nika about this and he said once you get to a certain point in this game Sometimes the best practice you do is just in your brain in between times that you're playing. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got enough of that uh, of that um, game knowledge and like knowing, just like oh, if I if this was this instead, I know I actually do know the outcome here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have to test it. Like I know, you know, um, for the most part, you know, mm-hmm. there's always. 
new little tidbits you learn. But uh, yeah, no, I think I think he's right there. Yeah. Do you get stressed out playing anymore? Uh, only on Fightcade. <laughs> really? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean that's I think why I still do okay in tournaments is because like I played in a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. Like, even though I'm not like up to snuff as much as I probably should be, like. You know, I can always rely on, like, all right, well, I could probably hit this guy with jump back medium kick, like, five times and just mess his mind up and then win that way instead or something. You know what I mean? Like, my... I do... I still... You know, everyone's going to have those rager moments, like, oh, man, I, if that guy hits me with that one more time. <laughs> like, you know, like, I can't believe he's doing this. The audacity, right? But no, I like. I think, you know, just because I've been playing so long, like, I think I do a pretty good job with managing it. But I'm also, but it also may not look like that to the outside because I'm like, you're an idiot after yeah. I lose or something, <laughs> or you know. But that's just how I am. So, awesome. Okay. Next question from Sunny. So, uh, a while back, you made a video about how important it is to, you think it is to watch your replays. What do you look for when you watch your own replays? <laughs> Sorry, the cat like yawned at me the second. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, I mean, it, it, in the simplistic terms, like, what is the what can you adjust that is the biggest bang for your buck off the bat? Like we talked about in the beginning, like, do I punish sweep every time? When I do a punish, am I utilizing meter? Or if it's not meter, am I doing it? If am, am I am I am I either maximizing my damage with my meter, or am I maximizing my position for the next thing? Right? Mm -hmm. um, like just simple improvements like that to take note of. Um, I think are, are are your biggest bang for your buck. And then like when you get super like Daigo like and polished and solid, like then you can start to like nitpick about like little micro adjustments and stuff like that. But just like I, even in like one of the video I think he's talking about, like mm. dude, like one of the punishes if I just punished with a raw super instead of trying to do uh instead of like like trying to micro step walk forward and like get Q stomp and, and instead I got like his fur far <clears throat> his far medium kick. That would have been the round. Like small improvements that net you big changes is really is really what I would focus on. Um and honestly I don't care who you are, Exo, Nika, myself, Lance, Wax, uh whoever big dicks are in here. Um <laughs> there are huge things that like they can change a little bit in, in net big damage and it's not it's not that like they can't <clears throat> it's like that they're messing up it's just like the game's quick dude like sometimes you you know you 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 go with what you can do at the second what you can fit out and make sure you at least convert something like um <clears throat> once you get to that level of being able to constantly hit hit in those maximized things and sure go ahead and nitpick but I, I almost anybody you watch you can find something like damn he could have probably just turned it right there right mm -hmm. yeah uh and then i missed a question actually from katie my bad katie um i like this question so who's your favorite american alex not the best but your favorite player alex player uh myself yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> great answer Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. I'm not even going to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Lance, do you want to hop into the rapid fire section? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. rapid fire questions. Um, top five games, your top five favorite games of all time. Any 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 games? Doesn't have yeah, to be any game. game. Any game. Huh? Okay, well, the, okay, so it's Third Strike. Then... Um, Warcraft three, yes. Oh, great answer. Uh, then, then KOF thirteen. Mm -hmm. Um, you said five. five yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh, shit. I would have to say. Hmm. 
Probably 1.6 oh, Counter Strike. Okay. Hell yeah. Um, you know these are like nostalgia to me, but but there's something about them, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then God, yeah, who do I give the last spot to? That's a. Hmm. I, I, I'm just going to pick a genre because I can't pick one, but Tower Defense. Okay. All right. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all... Um, what, what, race, what race did you play in Warcraft 3? Uh, random. Random. Wow. Okay. Nice. We all went to uh, Houston dude, you got to make it hard, dude. Like, I can't... Like, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me, but yeah. <laughs> we all went to Houston recently, like uh, 10 of us DFW players in the... Their, their arcade's actually in a land center. So we got to play uh, f- 5v5 1.6, like amongst 3S heads. And it was fucking, it was more fun than playing 3S, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that shit was so much fun, Dude, man. There's something about it, like, yeah. you know, I don't know. That's why I had to had to bring it back that old. Mm-hmm. It'll make them like they used to, I guess. Yep, yep. So I'm inkling that you were into Warcraft 3, because I remember you streaming it once. And I was like, oh, yeah. so sick. I mean, my my personal choice is human, but huh. my 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 default when I like was heavy heavy into it was random. Okay. But like, yeah, if if I have to pick, it would be human. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, I I mean, I uh, James is in the chat and says you're actually good at Warcraft Three. I'm not. I'm trash. Uh, but I really enjoy <laughs> the game. Like, I just okay. I would just fucking mass hunts every time, and then. Uh, <laughs> Pretty good, right? That's a pretty good strategy. No, it, it is. I had a very successful friend that literally only. Focus on micro and mass hunts, and he t- he beat some really big names out there. Like it was really funny, but yeah, no, it it works. That's a good strategy. Yeah, Sunny and I are, are currently arguing about who would win a workout three. We're gonna find out this week. But okay. Sunny already knows what's coming. <laughs> okay. you're, you're gonna lose to Sunny really bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your okay? So you're sending the five best Americans to represent America in a you know a five v five tournament. Who is your dream American five v five team? Hmm. Uh, man. Yeah, there's no way I'm not going to piss people off this way. Um, <laughs> it's hard for me to say certain people because some of them I haven't actually played in person. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they're just good and they haven't faced me early in the tournament yet, or no, I'm just kidding. Um, I think okay, so let's pick. Let's actually pick. Like ever or like currently? Ever. Oh, whatever. Whatever yeah, way you want to answer the question. I think that could be fun if you want to do ever. Yeah, up to you. No, that's cheating. We'll do currently. Okay. All right. All right. So we gotta. We gotta. I, it's like not. It's not like. You gotta throw Exo in there because, like, he won the last one, so you mm-hmm. just kind of have to put him in there. Sure, yeah, yeah. I guess that's yeah. fine. <laughs> and, well, also, he like he has a very similar philosophy to how I think about third strike. So, mm-hmm. you know, good job, Exo. <laughs> um, uh, Nika, sure. Yeah. Um, and I do really wish I played Nika offline ever because, like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna feel the heat. Like, mm-hmm. I wanna see what it's all about. Um. Then I would say, who I would say, I dude, big game James. Okay. You like, you might not get it, but you will get it if it ever happens. <laughs> like, um, then let's throw in a uh, ten ren. Okay. Okay. And then, God, I love Neiman, but. It's either Neiman or Rennick. Like, I don't know. <laughs> those are, yeah, those are the two. That's what I was thinking. No, I, it would have to be Neiman. Like, sure. I'm not going to do the U.S. a disservice and like, here, have a Q player. Like, yeah. so, you know. But I think I think that would be, that would probably be our best bet. Um, although, I do get slightly even better when I'm on a team. Just saying. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, we got Exo, Nika, Big Game James, Tenrin, Neiman. Yep. Yep. Solid. Um, Solid. Okay. Oh, oh go shit, ahead, Ray. Did I not put a Chun on the team? You didn't put I a mean, that's up to you. 
No, 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 but it's <laughs> kind of a must, right? You have to. Uh, I mean, you don't I have don't to. You don't have to, but I mean, hey, one of our characters. Let's see the characters. Yeah, we, okay, got, we got Dudley Luffy, Yang, Ken, uh, Dudley Yang, Ken. Yep, Ken. And right? Abuki. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. That's a. Damn that's it. a. <laughs> there might be some character problems on this. Team. Yeah. Fuck. But who? I mean, you're the Chun, right? I mean, if Ryan still counts as American, I'd say Ryan. You could also credibly argue Justin and Amir. Just you know, same thing. Yeah, but Amir doesn't practice. He's yeah. worse than I am <laughs> in that regard. Like he just—he's just a talented dude. Like he'll just show up and do shit. Sure. Um, and Justin, damn. If we had to swap somebody out because we need a Chun. Which I think it's kind of a rule. Okay. If yeah. we're like actually being in business, we kind of need to put a chun on. Mm. I'll pick you. I'll pick you, Lance. Oh, thank oh. you. Oh, thank you. Oh, this really God. is the last podcast episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is it. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Oh, so last question. It's kind of a long one. You can take as long as you want with this one. So we kind of yeah. talked about uh, third strike stories and passing down stuff. Something I've noticed is a lot of the young players don't know shit about the old days. Like, when I started in 2011, one of the things that was really important to me was to absorb the culture. So, you know, I talked about how I watched all your videos and the c mm -hmm. videos, the Dr. Sub-Zero podcasts, uh, FFA, I, mean, I watched it all, everything that I could find. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if I said, like, Victory to these new kids who have been playing for, like, dude, they have no idea. No idea. So, yeah. uh, that's the setup. Dude. The question is, tell me some Third Strike stories from the old days, That some of your favorite stories. Oh, God, dude. I mean, I can just start spitting out tidbits. Like, back in the day, Vic Tali, like, you bring up Vic, like, back in the day, he was the most Japan-ready player. Mm -hmm. Like, in just the way he thought about the game and how clean he was in the execution and stuff like that. You know, he had a little bit of tournament nerves and all that, mm -hmm. but just how, how he understand and how he played Third Strike was, like, back in the day, like, Vic, Vic, uh... Vic was something else. Like, uh, but as far as like story stories, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. <laughs> Some of these stories, it might be scandalous. Yeah, um, <laughs> I I'll go with some some lighthearted ones, I guess. Yeah. I <laughs> All right. So if anyone knows Yi, you know he's he's a bougie guy. You know what I'm saying? So like. You know, he's on the third strike at cabinet at Family Fun playing, right? I think I think it was me and him and maybe somebody else got back from In and Out. And we had put our leftover In and Out in the trash, which happened to be right next to the cabinet. Okay. The third strike cabinet, right? So there's like animal fries left over and stuff like that. Like trash, cabinet. Yee's on the cabinet. I'm next to Yee, like and the trash can's in front of me. He's, <laughs> he's playing and then you know hey you know it's the valley like like i just meth out bum just walks right in and just starts chowing down on <laughs> on, the, on the in and out and you you can't handle it he's like no 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 i can't play like this like uh, just, but just the face when he turned to me and like was this is this reality right now like that was that that was a good one. Um <laughs> one time uh oh, there's there's the time where I don't know if you guys remember Kai. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh Kai uh and can I got into like some kind of weird argument or something like that. And it for whatever reason, like, you know, third strike, they come outside of fam family fun, there's like a circle of people. <laughs> and and like it was like can i like kai was like can i you can't even do a pull up <laughs> and then and then and then the rest of the group kind of like egged each other on to like do a pull up okay uh and lo and behold can i beat kai in doing pull ups by doing this weird mind over matter like somehow Somehow, like, climbing up with his legs in the air, like, he's not, there's nothing to step on. Somehow he's, 
Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's uh, funny stories like that, just where, like, Third Strike turns into, like, weird, really, really pathetic weeks, uh, feats of strength. <laughs> um, you know, there's the, there's where, there was an era where, uh, before the tournaments, Pyro, I have a little bit of an athletic background, I'm not going to get into it, but Pyro was like, dude, let's go to the park and do backflips and practice backflips before the tournament. Okay. Like, that's, that's <laughs> like, you know, like, I, that's family fun, dude. Like, it was just a, it was just a nut house kind of, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, shit, we can keep freaking going, but I think if I had to, like, end it all with, with the story, I think, um, I think, God, this is, this is. I don't want to like get too deep into stuff, but like, uh, I remember one time like, uh, Gooey, Gooey was on the calves and uh, he was just beating the shit out of like uh, this like this three person crew, and like he was like really like just you know getting mad streaks on him, and then um, for whatever reason they got a bug up their ass and they were like. Like, they, like, three go up to him and, like, we're gonna, like, fuck you up and, like, we're gonna knife you and shit like that. And, uh... And... <laughs> God. So, like... So, you know, they're, like, gonna tell him they're gonna wait outside for him or something like that. So, Gooey comes up to me. He's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but but you got me, right? And he's, he, ta- he was talking to me and Ray El Guapo. Okay. And, and Ray's, like... Yeah, doggy, whatever. Like, and for whatever reason, I'm like, bro, I'm UFC. Let's fucking go. Like, I don't know why I was so amped up about it, but like, like, yeah, fuck, like, who is it? Like, let's fucking. And like, I'm probably like was back then one of the smaller dudes in the fucking whole arcade, but I, I don't know. I'm just uh, like, I like scrapping, but uh, so yeah, we'll end it there because I could probably just keep on talking about random third strike related, loosely related things, but yeah. <laughs> Awesome. awesome. Uh, okay, that's all my questions. Ray, you got anything? No. Uh, what is your closing thoughts? Third strike. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, I really only wanted to say that, like, you know, these these younger players, um, that are are exceptional. They're really good at third strike. They're already playing third strike. You should really, really leverage where Third Strike is at at the moment, which can I can only say open some other opportunities for you. Uh, and I'm not talking about like a bunch of financial gain or anything like that, but just just amazing experiences, life experiences, um, via the way of of getting out there. Like be be okay with taking shitty losses on stream and stream like you you, there's a lot of exceptional newer players out here um that are playing a lot anyway they should probably just turn on the stream an hour or two a week and and preach the gospel and and maybe maybe during that time of streaming that you can practice your 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 mental ability to take L's. <laughs> It'll make you a better player. Yeah. And what I'm saying in, in the whole ground scheme of things is that Jazzy is is gonna keep growing. There's an actual league and an organization behind it that's gonna keep doing what it's doing. And because you're an exceptional player and good, you putting in a little bit of work and streaming extracurricular third strike can really pay dividends for you. And you'll potentially be able to meet and do a lot of things that you may not or make it easier to do uh, if you uh, put a little side work, quote unquote, into. Um, you know, I, I I was gonna probably do a video down the line of like very bare bones, like this is how you get a stream up and running. These are the bare things you need. If you can at least do that and bring a little bit of charisma and your skillful self, uh, you'll have a successful time. Um, if you put a little work into it. Um, but honestly, dude, like, you can chat GPT anything. Like, 
you can literally ask it how do i do this on my stream and it will tell you and you can do it and and you can figure out everything out in 10 to 15 minutes where you know years when i was trying to do it like it took me like because because like i'm challenged like <laughs> hours and hours so uh yeah that's all i wanted to kind of say like that and um yeah other than if you're on Fightcade, you better accept my challenges i'm just saying if someone challenges you and you have a, and they have a good ping stop rejecting them accept it <laughs> Yeah, your S. Yeah, your A. Whatever. Except my D ring challenge. <laughs> That's it. That's all I gotta say. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Renick. Appreciate your time. Uh, maybe yep. I'll see you out there in Arizona. Well, maybe I'll try to figure that out. So. Dude, make it happen. Yeah, he says February, right? Yep. Okay. I'll see what I can I'm do. I'm gonna start hitting up all of y'all individually and just like give you little little pushes. <laughs> you should make it out here, dude. It's the best one. I just bias, bias, but yep. you gotta come to Dallas too. You, I know you've been okay. to Austin, I mean, right? I already a few times, so it's he's been out to Dallas. Turn, right? Right? Oh yeah, you went to Jazzy. Oh yeah, 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 the one year. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, well, I, I I plan on doing some work and getting to places that I haven't been in a while. So yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for the stream, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to check the YouTube uh, upload whenever that gets done. Whenever we fucking make chosen do it so i don't know how to do yeah, it so uh but yeah that's pretty much it thanks guys appreciate you thanks right. later